Our first guest uh, to kick off our week is Jacob Witt. He is the Director of Financial Aid at Shepherd University. Jacob, good morning. Thank you so much for being with us today. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Great. To, how long have you been with uh, with Shepherd now, Jacob? Uh, probably about two years. Uh, well, it will be two years in September. So, uh, Let me ask you a question here before we get into the ins and outs of financial aid. It's, we're in uh, mid-July, and in uh, about a month, kids will be back in college and stuff. So, uh, how did you wind up as a person who specializes in financial aid at Shepherd University? What's the path? Uh, mainly, I would say it it starts, uh, I actually worked in the financial aid office at Hampton Sydney College uh, mm -hmm. when I was going to school as a federal work study student. And that gave me a preview of what financial aid was other than what I was doing, putting documents together for the financial aid office. And um, I just had an opportunity about for three years after graduating from Hampton, Sydney, to get back into financial aid, and I jumped at that opportunity, and I've been in it ever since. So, I am told that as financial aid has moved along over the years, and I was in college in the 80s, that it's less grant-based now and more loan-based in regards to federal student aid. Jacob, is that accurate? It's a little like yes and maybe no. Um, it's <laughs> that sounds like the answer my wife gave me when I first asked her out. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is aid. There's federal student aid. There are three or four different types of grants that you can get. Um, there's federal work study, and then there's three different loans that you can get through the federal government. So if you compare three loans versus four grants, the grants are more, but the grants are not easy to come by when, it, when you look at income of the people that fill out their FAFSA. Um, when that happens, if their income is too high, they're not going to be eligible for the grants. So we are in mid-July, and, and school yes. starts in about a month. I presume that by now everybody should have had their paperwork finished, and you should know what your awards are, or at least be close to a pretty good idea of, of what you need to make your final payment at Shepherd. Yes. Um, what we try to do at Shepherd, um, something we implemented this past year, is we actually started awarding for the upcoming year in December. Um, so the FAFSA is available to be filled out October 1st, and so when that is done, we have the access to be able to pull in that data into our system, and we started packaging students right before the Christmas break. Billy? Yeah. Uh, Jacob, thanks for joining us. Uh, we hear so much about the student loans and the difficulty uh, students have uh, paying back the loans. Uh, walk us through how someone could go from a fairly modest student aid, uh, uh, financial, re uh, financial aid request to several hundred thousand dollars worth of student loans. Well, I... I wouldn't say $100,000 in student loans unless you're continuing on into a master's degree or something like that. Um, students are only eligible up to a certain amount each year. So when you're talking about student loans, the students, the loans that the student is responsible for paying back, they can only get as a dependent student freshman year you can only borrow 5500 in federal student loans so that's the first year the second year um, it goes up by about a thousand the third year it goes up by another thousand and then your senior year it's the same amount as what you get your um, junior year so it's not on the student loan side, you can't borrow as much until you get into your master's degree where you can borrow 
20500 a year for a graduate degree. So uh, so when we hear the reports uh, on television and the like for several, several thousand dollars, uh, that's generally for postgraduate education? For the most part, like if if I do the numbers, I think it's five five zero zero. Um, five zero 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 seven five zero zero. And so the most, if the student completes an undergraduate, if they complete an undergraduate degree in four years, they're borrowing um, the max that they can borrow is twenty seven thousand. Okay. So then after that, it's grad school, and if they go to grad school, then they can borrow the 20500 per year. So if they go two to three more years, that adds up. Okay. Okay, that, yeah, that's, that's very clarifying. I did not realize that they were limited how little could uh, the apply. Now, that's for Shepard, and I assume that applies to any school, any student at any school requesting a federal loan. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. John Gilstrap. <clears throat> um, good morning. So at Shepard, what, what does a semester or a year, the 5.5, 5, the uh, 5,500 is for the year or semester? That's for the year. For the year. And what does a year yep. of tuition, room and board cost at, at Shepard? Uh, if you're in state, um, I think it's right around, well, I'm estimating here, around 24. Um, if you're, well, there's a quite a bit of different things that play a part. Like, it depends if you're going to live on campus. Like you said, room and board, it's around 24 uh, for tuition, room and board if you're living on campus. So, it's only 14000 if you're going to live at home but take classes at Shepherd. Okay, so. so whichever that number is, it maxes out at the federal loan at 5500 So for kids who are dedicated, really want to go to school, do they end up stacking loans and from, from different sources? Is this how they, they get in trouble? Um. There is, if you don't have anything else, um, then you have to take out a private loan, but that is the last resort. So there are what's called Parent PLUS loans that parents can take out to help pay for college. And um, the Parent PLUS loan, you can borrow as much as you need up to cost of attendance, which is the estimated cost of going to school for a year. And what are the conditions of a student loan? Is it just principal during the, the the time that they're in school, or is there any repayment? Is it principal and interest? How does that work? Yeah, there's um, no repayment while in school unless the student chooses to. So there's two different federal student loans. There's the subsidized and the unsubsidized Stafford loans, um, or federal direct loans. Subsidized and unsubsidized. Subsidized means that the interest is subsidized while you're in school. So it's the better of the two loans because the other one accrues interest while you're in school. But neither one of them do you ha you don't have to start paying either one of them back until six months after you graduate, drop below half time, or leave school. So you have six months after that period, after you leave school, before you have to start paying back these loans, the subsidize accrues no interest, which means you could have an interest-free loan if you paid it off before you graduated, or you have the unsubsidized staff loan that does accrue interest, and you can choose to pay that interest while you're in school, but you don't have to. How are kids supposed to navigate this system. I shouldn't. I frame that question the wrong way. It seems like a there are a lot of moving parts, and for the average eighteen year old, um, with or without without parents, right, um, in, involvement. How do how do kids learn how to navigate the system to find the the financial aid? I think it's most importantly that they need to reach out to the financial aid office of the university that they're planning to go to school. Um, that's what we have a job for, to help and assist. 
um, every single student that comes to us. And um, so we sit down with them. We can talk over every possible option that they have. We usually break down once they register at orientation, we break down how much the bill is going to be minus the aid that they're receiving and um, show them what the bottom line is and then how are we going to cover the difference. Are you going to do a payment plan or are you looking at some other resource that you need? Is it a Parent PLUS loan? Is it a private loan? Do you have scholarships, outside scholarships, private scholarships? that you applied for that you're eligible for that you're re that we need to put on your financial aid package and stuff like that and typically what is the collateral uh, they there is no collateral for the federal student loans and stuff like that they they just fill out the FAFSA um, it's not even credit based they don't look at the federal government says these students are eligible for these loans if they're going to school and so that is what it is and now on the private side private loans yeah usually there has to be a cosigner if no one established credit if the students didn't establish credit so they would use a cosigner um, to help co to get the credit score they need to be eligible for the loans yeah, Jacob, using Shepherd as an example, uh, there's your grants, a lot of that grant money is from fed, federal government, the financial aid is from federal government. Uh, does Shepherd or schools comparable with Shepherd uh, have another source of funds that they are able to provide the students for some either grant, scholarship, or loan? Yeah, uh, not any loans. Uh, the loans are either federal loans or private loans through the private industry. Um, but we each university usually has a foundation. Uh, the foundation is made up of donors donating money to the school for scholarships for students. So we have a foundation at Shepherd. There's a certain amount of money that we can spend from the foundation each year, and those are scholarships that go to students, um, whether they're athlete, non-athletic, um, just they have certain criteria that the donor puts in place to say, this is what I want this student to have to be able to receive this scholarship. And we go through the list of scholarships that are available and we pair them up with the students so they get those scholarships. You, looking at your stu uh, student body in total, approximately what percent are our own used student loans or financial aid? Uh, well, I did the numbers the other day. 85% of last year's students filled out a FAFSA. Uh, so 85% of them filled them out. Now, I can't say how many of them borrowed loans or how many of them received Pell. I think the Pell number is somewhere, somewhere around 60% uh, of students that come to Shepherd get receive some type of Pell grant, which is the federal, the m main uh, federal grant from filling out a FAFSA. Jacob Witt is our guest here on the program. He's the Director of Financial Aid at Shepherd University. Bill, did you have a follow-up on that? going for, just for clarification, grants that you do not have to pay back. That's money given to you. That's 100% correct. Yeah. Other than there are a few grants that the federal government, like the TEACH grant, it's for educational purposes. Um, if you take out a TEACH grant and you don't meet the requirements after taking out that grant, it can turn into a loan, um, an unsubsidized Stafford loan. But other than that, there's a couple other grants that do that, but not most of them. Grants are free money. You don't have to pay back loans. You have to pay back. But if, you're, if a student is applying for financial aid, do they all understand that they have a payback re responsibility? It's, 
it's only if they take out the loans, they have to fill out a master promissory note and entrance counseling in order to get the loan. And that entrance counseling and master promissory note states that you promise to pay back this loan. So they, they have to fill out two extra documents whenever they want a loan, and we can't get the loan unless they fill that out. So we, we mentioned interest a while ago. What is the prevailing interest for a student loan? Oh, let me see real quick. I should know it, but I want to make sure I'm right. Student loans. Um, interest rate is interest rate on the subsidized Stafford loan for 23-24 is 5.50. And the same thing for the unsubsidized staff loan, 5.50. There's also a, what's called an origination fee that the federal government takes out of the loan in order for the student to get it, and that's a 1.057. Jacob, what is the financial situation with Shepard? Uh, what, about a month ago, we heard the story about WVU being $45 million in the hole. And across the state of West Virginia, I imagine as WVU goes, the smaller universities uh, also go in the same direction. So tell me about the financial health of the university and the university's ability to provide any uh, scholarships or, or grants from its own foundation. Um, on the scholarship side, the foundation type stuff with interest rates and stuff like that, the, the found like foundational scholarships are not accruing as much because interest rates have gone down and um, and they're not making as much money on the funds that they have vested. So there is some of that, but for the most part, the foundational money does, does not change because of the institutional financials. Um, in any way whatsoever. The foundational money is a separate entity, and they have that. And how is attendance at Shepherd relative to the last couple of years? Well, during the pandemic, attendance dropped. Uh, we are on our way back up. We're doing a good job right now at bringing in more students. So we had an increase last year, and we're expecting another increase this year. So. I want to ask you, uh, go back again to repayment of these loans. I know there are certain jobs that students can get after they graduate where part of the loan is ultimately forgiven if they stay at a place for so long. I have a son that works for uh, MedStar, which is a nonprofit. Uh, uh, he's yep. also worked for uh, state government uh, in the past as well. Uh, so if my understanding is as he stays at those jobs for 10 years, any balance of loans at that point – are forgiven in those specific circumstances. Are students made aware of that as they take these loans out? Definitely. It, it's all about uh, there's what's called the public service loan forgiveness, which is what you're talking about. Yes. If you work for a nonprofit after 10 years on a income-driven repayment plan, um, your loans are... I guess, canceled out. You don't have to pay anything back after the 10 years. Um, and that's if you're working for a nonprofit. Um, there's some regulations behind that, but for the most part, that's if, if you go and work for a nonprofit, you're going to have your loans forgiven if you're on that type of repayment plan. Other than that, um, there's the standard uh, 25 years. I think currently the if you do an income-driven repayment plan and you're not going into public service, but you do that plan and you pay for 25 years, then your loans are forgiven after that point also. But you, and that's, you do have to remain in good standing with your loan payments to achieve that yes. level of forgiveness. And you have, to, you have to make your monthly payments. Whatever they are saying they are, you have to make the monthly payment. It's not even just 10 years. It's... 10 years of making the monthly payment. So you can't just skip a payment and say, oh, I did my 10 years. No. Is there a seminar that kids can go to, um, or adults for that matter? We have such a credit issue in, in the United States with people owing more than they have. 
but for students in particular, where they're very susceptible to, uh, hey, look, I've got all this money that, that I can spend. Is there a seminar they can go to that actually lays out for them that this is not free money, that you do have to pay it back, and the sooner you pay it back, by paying it back in two years as opposed to 25 years, you actually will save this much money? Are they educated in that? Well, we do. Um, I forget what the class is. We have a first year experience class for all of our students at Shepherd and most of the time they invite the financial aid office to come in and sit down and do a budgeting and financial aid seminar in that class to go over okay this is what it looks like this is what your repayment could be look this is what it would look like and this is how you would have to pay it back and this is how much you would accrue and we break down all that if you pay it back in this amount of years then you'll accrue less interest and stuff like that Jake? but outside of shepherd i um a lot of the private lenders will do the same thing uh they'll do those seminars so they offer that up um i don't know outside of universities does that occur? Probably not. Final minute here, Jacob. What advice do you give to parents who have rising seniors in high school uh, over this summer? Yeah, I would say fill out the FAFSA, um, make sure it's done, um, and then apply for scholarships. There's numerous websites out there. I'll name a few. I'm not. Um, Fastweb.com, College Board. Um, those are websites that they're uh, a list of scholarships that you could apply for. So go out there and apply for those scholarships and get as many as you possibly can to lower the bill. Jacob, thanks so much for your time this morning. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Have Take a good care. one.